One of the most epic predator-prey battles ever is between the porcupine, one of the best defended mammals out there, and its arch nemesis, the fisher, the only animal fierce enough and crazy enough to regularly attack porcupines. And this interaction happens in the northern forest where it has real ecological implications. Oh my God, look at that. That's just like so trimmed. Like it should be a big full green canopy. And there's just little bits left because the porcupine has eaten it all. And if you look down the ground, you can see the parts that they've dropped uh, while eating it. So this is the damage that they can do to a tree and why you need to have predators like, por like fishers around to keep the porcupine populations in check. And here you can see the trail leading from the den to uh, the feeding tree. And in this case, we're going to the den, and this is a ground den. Uh, and this particular place was really amazing because it was really had lots and lots of holes in the ground. And if you go down in there, you can see long tunnels under there. So lots of good porcupine habitat here. So this is the place that we think the fishers need to catch the porcupines when they're on the ground, moving between a sleeping site and a feeding site. And in fact, there's a fisher trail in the snow coming right through here. So we know fishers are using the spot, porcupines are using the spot. So we got a camera trap there, we got a camera trap there, we got a camera trap there. We're gonna try to see if we can catch an interaction between this predator and prey. Okay, so let's meet the porcupines. This guy's coming out of a cave den. And here you can see one with its uh, spines up. So they can kind of raise or lower them depending on how alert they are. They're pretty funny looking dudes. I really enjoyed some of these close-up shots we got. This guy in particular, they kind of look like gremlins to me. This is like some kind of snow gremlin. Here you can see again the alert. Sometimes they come by alert, sometimes they don't. This guy, wow, look at that. It's like the blooming of the rosette of spines. Let me show it again a little closer. Don't know what it was that freaked him out, but he got nervous. And here you can see a little view of their trail. So you can see there's some fresh snow here, but you can see the sort of divots in there. And so I would put cameras all along this trail system. And here you can see two cameras at once lit up around this den site. And even uh, the little guys in particular have trouble, even when it's not deep snow, just kind of walking around. But they are super, super cute. Here's a little baby. Looks like some kind of Pokemon walking on the trail. Well, he's a year old. This would be about a year old baby. Uh, here you can see mom and baby. Baby's already in the, in the den. Mom wants to get in. Two porcupines snuggling in a den? It sounds kind of prickly. I don't know, but somehow they did it. Here you can see a, a juvenile's walking up to a den, and then there's a, a, another porcupine down in there and freaks it out. Now this guy in particular was, it showed me some interesting things about the den. You can see he's leaving his den. It's a hole in the base of a tree. But these, these porcupines get pretty fat. They get really big. They need that insulation. And they have a hard time fitting into some of these dens. And I think sometimes they're really den limited. Here you can see he squeezed it and there's this chunk of wood that's in the way that he's not very happy with. So he's trying to chew it out. Um, but you can imagine uh, the challenges as porcupines get bigger, they get you know better insulated and safer from fissures, but might be more limited on where they can go for a den site. Especially if you think about the snow piling up could really get blocked in there, which would be a problem. A couple more oversized porcupines squeezing into their holes. This one really cracked me up, sort of sliding down like some kind of big chungus into its uh, hole in the ground. This is the, one of the big ones. I'm not sure if that's a male or female, but then <clears throat> you can see the little one covered in snow has been up in a tree a little bit, not too sure about that slide. It's a little scary. Maybe we'll go on the other side. Well, that's not going to be any better. Eventually. Still not quite sure. These guys are hilarious. So also when you see the dens, uh, you get to see that what sort of their routine is. Here's one's eating snowballs, right? So this is how it gets a drink. It just kind of woke up, it's right, this is 6.30 p.m. to getting ready to start the evening. They're mostly nocturnal, although we do see them out during the day, kind of having his morning snowball, a stretch, stretching his leg out and uh, getting ready to climb up, walk his trail and get to his feeding tree. So eventually I got this footage and um, you probably know the joke, how do porcupines mate? Um, well, these guys, they're not mating very carefully at all, and I'm not even sure they're mating. It's not really the right season, but clearly this dude is like not even at the right end 
Um, I got lots of this footage. I'm not showing it all for, uh, it all gets a little repetitive. <laughs> but anyway, this was pretty funny, pretty surprising uh, to catch right in front of the camera. <clears throat> so I want to talk a little bit about porcupines and snow because I do think it's a challenge. I mean, obviously they're adapted to it. Uh, they're well insulated. They live in some of the snowiest places, but they really have trouble getting around in the snow. As the snow gets deeper, um, they're a lot slower. And this is my favorite. Call this guy Snowplow. Look at him just struggling to get through the snow, pushing his way through like a snowplow. Pulls himself self up out of the snow on this branch, looks over and says hi, and then oh, back to it. And here's a little spiky again, this time with a little more snow and oof, face plant. All right, so let's talk about the fisher. The fisher is a big weasel, basically. It's in the weasel family. Um, and uh, they are uh, the only species, really, them and maybe mountain lions, that sort of regularly prey on porcupines. So somehow they've got it figured out. Um, no one's ever filmed it in the wild. Uh, very few people have ever, ever seen it or seen parts of it. Uh, we've seen carcasses that, they've, uh, that are the result of it. We've seen um, uh, porcupine, you know, in the diet. We see fishers with porcupine quills stuck in their skins. So clearly this is something that happened. And from this video, I can tell you that these fishers are way more common on these porcupine trails than anything else. Uh, you know, we got um, a few coyotes, a few foxes, uh, but we got dozens and dozens of fishers. And here you can see a guy, I sped it up a little bit, you know, really looking at the den site, uh, sniffing around, looking at, uh, running on the trails, looking for these porcupines. So here's a close up and I've shown you some of the longer clips where you get sort of better views of fishers, but really most of what we got were what I call fisher flybys, where they're just kind of cruising by, they cruise by the camera, they don't slow down, uh, they're just moving. Sometimes they're moving really fast. All you see is the tail as they're flying down the hill. Um, they really seem to try to hit these porcupine areas with speed. Uh, presumably trying to catch one of them uh, on the ground between the den site and the feeding tree where they can uh, try to take advantage and, and bite them on the head. What we think, based on the dead porcupines we've seen, that they, they need to bite them on the head. Close. Here you can see a fisher walking up to a porcupine in a den, realizing there's no hope in attacking that spiny uh, uh, front that he's given them. A little bit on porcupine and defenses. Here's a young porcupine gets a little freaked out by the uh, the tracks that the snowshoers had just walked through there. It runs back. Um, and so obviously, you know, they've got these spines and they can climb back up a tree or run into the hole. So that's one obvious defense. Um, uh, but another interesting thing, I saw these animals spinning around. Uh, look, at this is a young porcupine and I got the feeling from them that they're, they're just kind of plain. Uh, and I've talked to some other uh, porcupine biologists and they do say that the, the young animals spin around sometimes in play. Um, here you can see this little guy, looks like he's having fun, right? And we know that, you know, often play in animals is to perfect a technique that's needed in real life. And in this case, um, you can imagine if you were a fisher trying to attack this guy and all of a sudden, you know, he's spinning and whirling around with that spiky tail, uh, that's where trouble could happen for the predator. So it, it, it clearly is an anti-predatory behavior. But it also looks like a porcupine dance. So I did get this one, which this is an adult, and this guy looks seriously agitated. I don't think he's just playing. Um, I think there was a fisher around, and he got freaked out. We did get a fisher eating a porcupine. Here one comes up to a carcass that was completely frozen. We don't know how it died, and it was pretty hard to get at because it's so spiny and so frozen that the fisher left without getting much to eat. But later... This was discovered by a raccoon, and raccoons are a lot more dexterous, right, with their fingers, and this guy was able to get a bit of a snack. But he seemed to realize that it was going to be too much work just for him, so he went and told all his friends. And the raccoon posse returned for their own little party on this frozen porcupine. These three guys managed to eat pretty much the whole thing in a couple nights. In just one month, these cameras were able to reveal the fascinating predator-prey interactions between fishers and porcupines, and their importance to the health of these northern forests. But I still didn't get the great battle on film. I hope we can go back and try again. I think we still have a lot to learn.